In this example, we're going to uh, use Newton's law of gravitation to approximate the surface gravitational acceleration of a made-up planet with given mass and uh, mean radius. So if we have, let's say, let's take Earth as an example. If we have Earth right here with its radius of R and its mass of capital M, and then if you have an object on top of, on the surface of the Earth with mass of small m, okay, um, the distance between the object and Earth can be approximated by the radius of Earth, which is a capital R. Uh, this is reasonable because the size of most anything on Earth is going to be negligible when compared to the size of the Earth, when compared to the radius of the Earth. So we can use this R to um, represent the distance between um, the mass center of an object on Earth and the mass center of Earth. So if that's the case, the force between the small m, the a small object, and the Earth can be given by Newton's law of gravitation. G multiplied by small m times capital M, that's the mass of Earth, divided by the distance, which is capital R squared. And we realize that only the small m is a variable. Everything else are constants. So we can collect all the constant term. Okay, So this term right here can be evaluated on the surface of Earth, you already know that it's about 9.81, but we can use another constant to represent it, which is small case letter g. As a result, this equation simplifies into the equation we are very familiar with that we use to calculate the weight of an object on Earth that equals to mg, m being the mass of the object and g being the um, gravitational acceleration constants. So we're going to use the similar approach to determine the surface gravitational acceleration of a made-up planet. It has mass of this much and a mean radius of this much. Therefore, G again equals to capital G times capital M over R squared. In this case, capital G, this universal gravitational constant equals to 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th power. Now, I'm not going to write the unit because, as you can see, all these three units, meter, kilogram, and second, are um, SI base units. So if I'm working with only SI base units, I don't need to worry about unit conversion. So multiplied by capital M. This is going to be 9.25 times 10 to the 26th power. Notice that this kilogram right here is also an SI base unit. Again, I'm still working with SI base unit, so I don't need to worry about unit conversion. Now, divided by R squared, which is 5.48, times 10 to the fourth power kilometer, but kilometer is not an SI base unit. It is actually a thousand meter. So if I want to avoid doing unit conversion, I have to work with only coherent SI units. All base units are coherent SI units, okay? Uh, but kilometer is not. Therefore, I'm going to do a quick conversion, converting this into 5.48 times 10 to the seventh power meter. So now the unit is in meter, which is a SI base unit, is also a SI coherent unit. So now I can just work with this, uh, the pure numbers here. Uh, don't worry about the unit conversion for now, but this has to be raised to the second power, okay? So after you do the calculation, uh, keep three significant figures. This is going to be 20.6. That's only the numerical part. But because I already know that G is, 
is um, acceleration. And if it's acceleration, the SI unit for acceleration is meter per second squared. So I can basically just attach that unit to my um, result. Okay, so this is an example showing you how you can avoid doing unit conversion if you work only with SI coherent units. And SI coherent units mean, mean those units that can be derived by combining base units with a coefficient of only one without any other coefficient. Therefore, one kilometer, kilometer is not a coherent unit because one kilometer equals to a thousand meter. Therefore, it is made by SI base unit with a coefficient other than one. Therefore, this is not coherent. So if you only work with SI coherent units, then you don't have to worry about unit conversion during your calculation. All you need to do is to do the numerical calculation and then at the end, attach the appropriate SI unit to it.